Hello there, Juranish of Whiskey Lore, and it's time for another whiskey tasting. Today, doing a tasting of a whiskey that I have done a tasting of in the past. Although I must say that when I first tasted this whiskey, I was not overly impressed with it. I can't tell you exactly why it wasn't ringing any bells for me, but since then, I have had a little bit more out of the bottle, and I have had a different opinion of it. So I'm going to go through and do a little bit of a tasting on this and give a little background on the whiskey. This is one of those distilleries, it says uh, 1897 is when it was founded. That was a rough time for the Scotch whiskey industry because there was a lot of speculation going on. The Pattison brothers were, did a whole episode on Whiskey Lore Stories about this, uh, speculating in the market and it basically built things up until the bubble burst and it all came crashing down. So there was probably some interest in building distilleries at that time to take advantage of the whiskey boom. And so distilleries like Ben Roma and Tamdu were built at that time. And then all of a sudden the bubble burst a couple years later and here are these distilleries not being able to sell any of their whiskey because the prices of whiskey had just fallen through the floor. So Tamdu did survive. It had some times when it was mothballed for decades and then came back and actually went from having just two stills to having six stills. Uh, and so it's, it is a sizable distillery. A lot of the juice goes into blends. Most of the juice goes into blends. But they have, and the blends are uh, Famous Grouse, JMV, and uh, what is the other one? Um, Cutty Sark. But there are some individually bottled age statement and non age stated Tamdus. And this is the 12 year. Comes in a beautiful, beautiful bottle. Part of me buying this was because I saw the bottle. The other part of me buying this is that somebody highly recommended it to me. And I guess one of the dangers of having somebody highly recommend something to you is that your expectation is through the roof. So, interesting, you have to think about this with your own whiskeys if this may have happened to you. Someone built the expectation up too big before you had it, you didn't like it. Then, you remember that you don't like it, and when you go back and taste it, you're like, oh, well, that's actually not as bad as I thought it was. I think what that is, is a recalibrating of our expectations when we're drinking a whiskey. And that's why it is really hard to judge a whiskey on one tasting alone. And there's a lot of other factors that I've talked about on this podcast or on this uh, video series before that will also lead to maybe a bad experience with something and giving you a reason to go back and try it again and again. So this is a single malt. This is aged exclusively in sherry casks, Oloroso sherry casks. So there is no bourbon influence on this whiskey at all. So when I come in and do a nosing of this whiskey, I got to say that the distillate itself has a very heavy orange note to it. And the reason I say that I think it's the, the new make, or the actual distillate that's bringing that note is that's kind of a space side fruity character that comes through those brighter fruits. Maybe the way that it blends with that sherry cask helps bring more of an orange kind of a note out out of it. Sometimes you can pull some orange out of the way you're distilling uh, a roux out of Ireland, actually. I talked with their distiller, Oliver, and he said that they get an orange note off of their stills, and it's interesting. It can become a little bit too aggressive, so they have to watch it, but it is really strong here. So my sense is that's probably coming from the, the grain. Interesting I say grain, and now all of a sudden I pick up a little bit of a, a grain note in there as well. I don't get a lot of the cask. I get some baking spice in there. There's a little bit of a minerally note when you first put it to your nose. It's not overly aggressive. Probably some bitter from the rind. 
you know, that kind of, I get a full orange experience here from like the, uh, from the fruit itself out to the skin as well. But it has a lot of sweet notes going on in this one. So, like I say, this is kind of, I, I, nothing I've said would disappoint me in terms of enjoying a whiskey up to this point. Cheers. Mm. Mm. The grain comes through. The, um, the orange continues through, and there's really not the rind going on until you get to the finish. And then all of a sudden on the finish, you get that little bitter note that comes in. There's a little chocolate in there. I get some plum that you would probably get from that sherry cask. It's not dark, though. This isn't as um, syrupy sweet as their neighbor Cardu. This is a bit more, um, it's still a nice, robust, fleshy orange going on in this whiskey. So if you like orange, this is a whiskey that's probably going to really stand out to you. There's a bit of a ginger bite on the end of this whiskey that comes in along with that bitter. Um, I don't know why I didn't like this when I tried it the first time, and I think it likely, again, was way too high of an expectation. Probably a feeling that it was one-dimensional because the orange really is dominant here, and that maybe I was looking for complexity at the time, but if you're looking for something that is a fruity, citrusy whiskey with a really nice mouthfeel to it, this one is one that would go in that category. I have to tell you, um, I think this is a very good whiskey. I, I throw away whatever I was saying before. This one took a little time for me to warm to, but um, I... I've gone back to the bottle a couple of times and I have been more impressed than I was originally. And now I have analyzed and I understand why I like this whiskey. So very good. Have you had Tam Dew 12? What do you think? Do you like a whiskey that is heavily uh, one note uh, over, over the rest? Does that kind of comfort you in a way? You know, that sort of thing. And have you had whiskeys that you approached it once with too high of an expectation, then came back to it with too low of an expectation and felt yourself kind of wavering in your uh, thought process on a particular whiskey. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a like, comments below, please, and subscribe if you'd like to watch more down the road. Until next time, cheers and slam jaba. Glad that it's back in my good graces.